Okay folks, today we have a cool little aquarium kit from Fluval to unbox. It's the Fluval EB. Isn't that a spec? It's just like the spec, but there's more stuff in it. Whatever gets you through the night, man. Coming right up. Hey YouTube, this is Peg Tech, and as you may have seen last week, I got this new Louisville tank kit in the mail, and we're gonna unbox it and set it up today. So you're building another little aquarium? You need to worry less about my tanks and more about that really weird shirt you're wearing. That's a... What's wrong with my shirt? That's a bold choice. Well, it belongs to you, so... Touché. How about you quit screwing around and maybe, you know, make me a game video or I something. I don't have to take this. Have fun. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Fluval spec. I mean, the EB. Okay, folks, so here it is, the Fluval EB. Uh, it was pointed out to me last week in that video that EB is short for shrimp, which is pretty neat. So this is a tank set that is intended for shrimp, and that's more than likely what we'll use it for. <laughs> I'll go into some of the reasons why. I'll point out along the way that the, the shrimp specific things that are included in this kit. But first, uh, let's take a look at the box. Now this is, for all intents and purposes, the Fluval spec, and you'll see that it's just been rebranded uh, with a lot more information that's real specific to shrimp. And uh, the contents, they've, kind of, they've changed a couple of things around. Uh, there's a nice little photo of all the contents and stuff. But it is, for the most part, the Fluval spec, just rebranded with some more stuff added. Some other people last week pointed out this for sale online. It's going for like between $100, $120, something like that. I was happy to receive this because I've got almost the exact same tank like the original 2.6 gallon uh, spec, but I attached a light to the back of it and I think I cracked it uh, ever so slightly. I can't actually find the leak, but there's a leak somewhere and if I fill the water all the way to the top, uh, I get a dribble that comes down and it's making a little white ring around the tank somewhere. Now, I'm not sure what that leak is, but I've been anxious to replace it. So this is a really timely uh, arrival. Okay, let's get this thing out of the box. We're gonna do it the Peck Tech way. We we'll give it the mega treatment. Ready? Ma 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 mega! Wow! It's a fluval spec, all right, with stuff in it. Let's take a peek real quick. Of course. You know, we've got this plastic lid. That's some love and some hate. Uh, let's go with the basic stuff first. We've got Fluval's light. This looks like, uh, it doesn't look like it's changed any from the newer version of the Fluval spec. A nice little aluminum LED light. And in here, we've got the power supply for the light. And of course, we've got a little box here that's gonna have the pump, it's just a little wee pump, little tiny pump. All right, and so now we're getting on to like the extra stuff that doesn't come with a regular spec. We've got this little Fluval shrimp guide, which is pretty neat. It's gonna offer you some helpful tips for keeping shrimp of different types. Pretty neat. And we've got a little Hagen shrimp net. These are cool little telescopic nets. They got a little loop here so you can hang them up someplace, but it's a neat, tiny, tiny little net. A little telescopic net. I actually got one of these in my, my, my aquarium box uh, last week, so now I've got a few nets. Here's what a shrimp sees when I come to net you. Ah! It'll be all right, I promise. I will take good care of you. Also inside here we have Shrimp Safe. Uh, Fluval branded tap water conditioner. That's interesting. I haven't seen a tap water conditioner made specifically uh, or branded specifically for shrimp, so I couldn't tell you if that's better or worse than regular conditioner. <laughs> and uh, Fluval Bug Bites Shrimp Formula. So we've got a shrimp formula version of the Bug Bites, which is cool. I know the shrimp love the regular Bug Bites quite a bit. All right, so net, water conditioner, bug bites, and also a little bag of Fluval Stratum. 
Fluval stratum is sort of Fluval's version of the, uh, the soil-based substrates. And the reason that they say that these are great for shrimp is they tend to soften the water. Also in the short term, they can release ammonia. I'm assuming that this will release ammonia just like uh, all the other versions of the soil substrates do. I've used, I have, have actually used this before, but it's been quite a while. I think I used this on the original Flora because it, it, I believe it came with some of this as well. And it does grow plants pretty well. Uh, all the soil-based substrates seem to be superior to the other ones as far as like just growing plants really well. There's not a heck of a lot in here, but I think that there should be enough. Should be enough to grow some plants and stuff. Uh, this is a really small footprint, so it's not gonna be that bad. That's pretty cool. So on top of the regular spec, we got a few extra things to make this more shrimp specific. And uh, all right, I think all that's left is to set it up. Whenever you set up a spec, it's real important. I think a lot of people forget to do this, so I wanted to point it out. It's important that, that you pull these things out of the bags. <laughs> these things are not ready to go. You need to pull these out of the bags. If, uh, if you're really smart, you'll take and uh, rinse this out in some conditioned tap water. This is the carbon. Basically what the carbon's gonna do is it's gonna pull things like tannins out of the water. Uh, if you've medicated, if you've medicated your tank, it's gonna pull that medication out. It just pulls like different things out of the water and kind of helps helps keep it clear and, uh, and nice. The other thing in here is gonna be some ceramic biomedia. It is also quite dusty. <laughs> and what you might wanna do is rinse this out in some dechlorinated water as well. Now what I'm gonna do with this is throw it straight into the sump of the 210 and let it mature in there. And in the meantime, I'm going to use the biomedia that's already been going in, uh, in the spec that I'm going to break down. I considered using the sponge that's in the other spec too, but I've got so much duckweed in there that I probably will not be able to get it all out of the sponge. I've been putting off the duckweed maintenance on this tank for a little while, but I think maybe before I even really get started here, it might be time to go and deal with that. Okay, so I'm down here by the pond, and a uh, quick update, the pond is doing really well. Uh, my pitcher plant has blown over a couple of times, but uh, it's doing better now. I think I've got it propped up where I won't do that again. And as you can see over here, we've got the old fluval speck and a bucket of dechlorinated water. We're gonna try a little trick. Amongst all this growth that you see this here, I believe this is Monte Carlo that's like some of it's kind of gone into this back filter. I haven't pulled this filter out in months, but some of this has gone into this back filter and it's actually started to grow back through here. So that's really wild, interesting. Also, there's a ton of moss in here. Sadly, I won't be able to use most of this because mixed in is also duckweed. And duckweed is what we're trying to get rid of. So what we're gonna do is something that I like to call the Rachel O'Leary method. She mentioned in one of her broadcasts that she had accidentally overflowed one of her tanks and it was a great way to get rid of duckweed. So we're gonna give that a shot. There are shrimp in here and I'm ready to collect them and put them in another tank. Uh, as I encounter them, that's why we're using dechlorinated water. We're gonna keep it as simple as possible. First thing that happens is it's blowing down under all those plants. I had to try to avoid that. And here we go. What? We've got the sun out now. We're going to go another, for another go here. We'll try a little bit more aggressively. I'm trying to keep an eye out and make sure no shrimp are washed over. Oh man, they just keeps coming. That was nearly three gallons of water I exchanged. That's pretty decent there. Pretty decent moss and I can't have any of this, this stuff coming over to the other aquarium because it doubles. It'll just take over and pretty soon It'll look exactly the same as this. I think it might be time to go on a little shrimp hunt. 
Let's see if I can capture anybody. Got one really pretty one in there at least. He's coming out. I think what I'm going to need to do is just go ahead and pull some of these plants out. I'm just as gently as I can, I'm going to pull these out. We'll see what we can save out of here. Got years and years of growth, or at least two, I guess two, maybe three years of growth in here, so I'd hate to waste it. Now, of course, it's way too muddy to find any more shrimp in there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this water settle for a little bit, and I'll come back and do a little bit more shrimp hunting later. I went through and I pulled all the shrimp out of here I could find, and uh, of course, I couldn't be absolutely certain that I got them all, so I poured what was left into the pond. So. Uh, all the remaining water went to the pond. I'm left with the substrate. They say that you can use the substrate that I used in here forever. Like uh, it never really goes bad. But there's something even more important inside of here and that is beneficial bacteria, old beneficial bacteria from the other tank. So what I'm gonna do is take a tetrahero cup here and fill it up with at least one really great scoop of this old substrate and it will make a nice bacteria-filled base layer for the new tank. It was extremely important to me that I didn't get any of that duckweed in the, uh, in the aquarium, so I rinsed the plants very thoroughly in this bucket, and uh, I've got this little trick that I use to keep my plants moist. Basically, I take a paper towel, and I get half of it wet, and then I just kind of like double it over on itself and get, make sure most of it's pretty moist. Then I take the plants and I just kind of wrap them up in here. I've, I've actually received plants in the mail from Taiwan this way. And when I ship plants, that's the way I ship them. Works really well. <sighs> well, folks, it's that time of year where it is extremely humid. <laughs> and uh, I got quite sweaty from my little adventure outside uh, wrangling shrimp and getting rid of duckweed the best I could. There are a couple of things that I kept from the old tank, one is a, a small heater. This is like a little five watt marina heater. And uh, I usually stick it in here with a pump or like on the sides, but I think I'm gonna try something different. I don't know if this will work out, but I'm actually gonna stick it right underneath because it's kind of flat. I'm gonna stick it right underneath where the sponge goes and just kind of see how that goes. Let me test fit that and see if it works. It's a little tight. <laughs> well, it actually, it'll go in there. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So that's going there. The other thing I kind of skipped because I've done a million, a million of these setups. Well, not a million. I've done quite a few spec setups. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is make a little spec playlist. And uh, there'll be a link at the end of this video for a spec playlist if you want to see all the other ones I've done and some of the other videos I've done about it. But here's the little pump. I just attached the hose. The hose was stored back here in this other compartment. And it comes with this extra little part right here. So what you do is you put the hose inside of this back compartment, then you attach this, this pokes through that hole, and then you attach this to the end of it and it locks it in place. If you'd like a really detailed version of that explanation, I've got at least six videos on it, but this time I'm not going to show it. You'll just have to use your imagination. The, in the Tetrahero cup, I have some still wet gravel from the old tank and hopefully no duckweed. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this along the bottom and make sort of a base layer. It's already going to have beneficial bacteria on it. And this is just a really thin layer. Thin layer of gravel, it won't make maybe a whole lot of difference, but a tip that I've heard ever since I started keeping tanks was to uh, add some gravel from an established tank to help it cycle up. So that's what we're going to do. I've actually done this a couple of times and I think it works. I think it works pretty well. Plus this stuff is a great base layer and I love to put this under I love to put this more inert stuff under the substrate whenever it's a soil substrate or something like that. Okay, next we're gonna break up in the stratum and uh, put it in there. I'm not gonna wash it out. 
I'm putting it straight in there. That is generally what I do with most of these soil-based substrates. You can wash it out. I find, to me, it gets a little bit mushy and it doesn't seem to be necessary. I mean, as I pour this in there, there's no dust. It's pretty much dust free. I'm sure some of it will float and there's some advantage to uh, putting some water on it. But we're going to soak it a little bit as we do this aquascape anyhow. And what I'm going to do is just kind of tear this up towards the back a little bit. And uh, if you're using dry substrate, uh, using a brush is a lot easier than the normal metal spatula and stuff. Whenever it's wet, I usually use the spatula or whatever you call that, my aquascaping spatula. And I actually, the way I'm planning on doing this, I don't want it to be too much of a slope and the slope will go away over time anyway. Some time ago, I got these really uh, interesting cut off pieces of cholo wood in my, my aquarium box. I think I pronounced that right. If I've finally gotten it right, I used to call it cholo wood and then I got a lot of corrections in the, in the comments. So I boiled some chola wood and I actually used some old uh, dragon stone to, to weigh it down and I boiled it. I, uh, I did one session of about 12 minutes or so, but that wasn't quite enough. So I actually ended up doing a second session for around 12 minutes and between the two of those, then I just turned the heat off and I let it sit there with the lid on it. And uh, it seems to be all sunken down now. So what I'd like to do is use those as kind of like little planters. So I'm going to put the crypts inside of them kind of like their little planters inside of here. And um, and then I'm gonna plant some Monte Carlo around the edges of it. So hopefully when it's filled up, it'll look like uh, a nice little uh, carpet of Monte Carlo. And then the crypts, of course, coming out the top of those. I don't know, it's just kind of a weird idea, but uh, let's go ahead and put it up in here and kind of see what it looks like. So I've got a nice hot can of chola soup. Take these rocks out of here and hopefully, hopefully these things won't float. They don't look like they're floating now. They should be well saturated. There is a good chance that they're going to turn the water, but they're pretty neat. Pretty neat little uh, pieces of wood. A lot of texture, a lot of interesting texture in these. All right, I'm just going to kind of test place a couple of them. We'll do the two big ones in the back. I might do a big one there, and then this one here. And another one right here. Yeah, that should give the Monte Carlo a lot of room to kind of develop in between here. I've also got some root tabs, and while I'm at it, what I think I'm gonna do, there should be plenty of nutrition in here to start with, but what I think I'm going to do, since I'm planting a very specific place, I'm going to go ahead and throw these down in each of these little planters. <laughs> the wood's actually so hot it's starting to steam up the side of the tank here. I'm trying to clear that out. So I ended up with a fairly good amount of Monte Carlo. They're just kind of like random sprigs here and there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it around the best I can. Monte Carlo can be tricky to plant. You just have to make sure that some part of it is sticking up above and uh, if there's enough light it'll just grow straight across the tank. Uh, one trick I like to do is bury two sides of it so it's kind of like a little loop if you end up with a long string and that way it'll sort of hold itself down but also uh, that middle part will grow out. This stuff really takes its time to get started but it will eventually spread out and go all over the place. It can be actually kind of hard to control. I thought pretty hard about perhaps using four leaf clover instead but uh, I had so much of this available it just seems like it'd be a shame not to not to use some of the trimmings to work on this tank. Plus it's a it's a known win. It's a it's an easy one to do, and I've done it before a bunch and had a lot of success. So kind of a no-brainer for carpeting plants. Okay, so I've got all the Monte Carlo down, and uh, while I was laying that in there, I noticed something else I didn't realize. 
uh, they've actually added a little grate to the front of this, which is really smart because my shrimp, whenever I kept them in a tank like this, they would always end up in this back filter. Whenever you did a water change, I'd have to be very careful to make sure that there weren't any stuck in here when the water got down below the line. So that's a really cool addition. It's, it's really similar to what they did for the Flex and uh, the big spec and all that stuff where they just added that grid to keep the small fish and shrimp from crawling in back here. Very good. Another thing I forgot to mention is whenever you aquascape one of the spec, like any of the spec line from the from the really from the two gallon all the way up to the five gallon, there's a there's a little slit right here that is sort of an emergency uh, thing to make sure that the motor doesn't burn out or the heater doesn't overheat. It's just a way for the water to get back into here should uh, should the water line get below this this grate. Just something else to keep in mind when you're aquascaping one of these. Now something I like to do is I usually add a little tiny rock of some sort and I'm gonna put it right in front of that hole I was just talking about. If I can find it. Where are you? Okay, it's right here. Make sure there's no plants in the way. I'm gonna put it right in front of there and uh, this isn't really an aquascaping thing. What it's for is when I fill this up with water, I like to fill it up from the back. Uh, so nothing actually pours down into the aquascape. I like to fill it up from the back and that will just kind of like, uh, when the water shoots out that hole, it'll give it something to bounce off of and it won't just shoot across the aquascape. So uh, I might leave that in there, I might take it out, but that rock will help kind of diverge the water around. Okay, so the last thing I have to plant in here are these crypts. And unfortunately, some of these are just, they're pretty massive. I think they'll actually be too big. So I'm gonna look and see what the smaller ones are like. And uh, anything I have left, I'll just give to one of my friends. If you remember earlier, some of these were growing right out the top of the aquarium. So, so now I've got three. I'm gonna wrap the rest of these up in this wet towel. And that should keep them in okay shape enough to give to a friend of mine. I had some moss too, but I don't think I wanna include that in this aquascape. I'm gonna just stick with these two plants and go from there. I'm gonna try, I think this is the biggest one. I'm gonna stick it in the back. I'm gonna try to stick that right there. I'm gonna slide the plant through here. All right. I like to plant it by just moving about an inch or two away from where I want it to be. I'll probably mess up this Monte Carlo. And then I just slide it down into there. This is going to go on top. Pull this guy out. And that will just kind of go on top there. What will probably help these a little bit is to fill these in with a little bit of gravel on top. So let me see if I can find some more and I'll do that. Found a little bit more substrate. I'm just going to kind of top off the inside of these things. And that'll give me a little bit more stability on these plants. It should look pretty cool once it grows in. It's a little weird right now with a little Monte Carlo just kind of sparsely spread everywhere. Yeah, but when this fills in, it should look a lot like the spec was before. Kind of the old version of that where it grew in and it was nice and lush. You could also look at the uh, the into the woods tank and the way it really filled in there. It absolutely took over that aquarium. So hopefully it'll do the same in here like it's done for me a couple of times already. And we'll have a beautiful little tank with a lot of different levels. Okay, so now we're up to that add water stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and put it in place. We'll fill it up and see what we get. All right, you are going right over here next to the ugly chair. This stuff in later and now what I'm going to attempt to do in the most awkward way possible is fill up water from the back chamber oh my gosh looks like that rock's doing a pretty good job of dispersing the water as it comes through but you can actually fill these up really fast this way and uh, once the water gets to a certain point, you can just pour it in. Great. See, it's still fairly clean in there. 
Uh, I got a few plants floating around I need to deal with, but for the most part, went in nice and smooth. Okay, it's the end part where I do my George Farmer pose. And just like that, the fun part is over. Now it's waiting for it to grow in, waiting for it to be ready for fish, <laughs> maintenance and all that kind of stuff. That's what I've got left ahead of me. <laughs> all right, and it's all set up. This should be an interesting one to, to watch grow in. It's a little bit different than what I've done before. I used a lot of the same plants I, I always use because they tend to grow really well in my water. But, but this is definitely a different, uh, a different style aquascape and it'll be cool to see what it looks like in a few months. And so you don't miss what happens with this thing and all my other tanks. Be sure to click the subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll know exactly when a video comes up. Which if you're into aquariums is every Sunday, usually around 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Anyways, I was <laughs> saying... Oh my god, you're a spaz. <laughs> yeah, good. Good, please. It's a smack! Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Fluval EB. Spec. Speedy. The Fluval Speedy. Probably wouldn't have worked. That's a spec.